friends, my name is Dasha. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the bookshelf tag. So I saw this one. I can't remember who did it, but I will link below the video I saw. But I saw this one and thought it was super fun. If you don't know, I moved recently. I will link the video right up here of me setting up my bookshelves in my new place and kind of organizing them. But essentially, I just wanted to kind of go through my bookshelves. As bookworms, we know how important it is to have a system for organizing our books and how we put our books and which books we keep. I'm a super sentimental person. I've been hanging on to books for years. It was so hard to unhaul for the move. So overall, bookshelves are extremely important to us. And so I thought this tag would be kind of fun to go over bookshelves in a bit more detail. I like the questions. And so let's get into it. The first question is how many bookshelves do you have? I have two. Once again, if you did see the video of me setting them up, you will have seen both of them in their full glory. They're both Billy bookshelves from Ikea. I've had the other one actually for 16 years. I literally, that's still the first bookshelf I got when I moved to Canada. Like I've had that thing for years. It is like my best friend. But yeah, there's that one and this one. These are my main bookshelves. I do also have a habit like when I buy and accumulate books, I kind of store them on or in my headboard, especially when I'm like in the process of reading several books. I like to keep them nearby because I often read in bed. So those are all stored around my headboard. My headboard has a bunch of little shelves too. So it's like really handy if these start overflowing, which they are about to. So that's kind of where I store books. But in terms of actual bookshelves, just two. The next question is how many books are on your bookshelves or how many books you think you have? <laughs> Ooh. I have a book tracker where I track how many books I own. I think it was Hardback Hoarders spreadsheet. I'll link it down below if you're interested for yourself, but basically there is a whole tab for tracking your owned library. And if I'm not mistaken, I own just under 200 books. I have some like nonfiction books, some souvenir books, some cookbooks, some children's books, some textbooks. I have duplicates of the entire Harry Potter series, like things like that I don't necessarily track. So the number is probably closer to 250, but in terms of like books, books, it's around 200. Next question is how do you organize your books? And once again, I do go over this a little bit in my video, but for the most part, just to generalize, I go by genre. It's the easiest thing to do. And if I can't necessarily fit all of one genre into a shelf or two, I kind of just make sure I keep fiction with fiction and nonfiction with nonfiction. So for example, this is my nonfiction shelf, my main one. I have a few other nonfiction books like floating around somewhere, but this is my main one. Up here, I don't think you can see it, but up there is my classics. Down here is like favorites and other fiction. I have like fantasy down here. It makes sense. Uh, but of course, I didn't fit like all my fantasy here, so I also have Keevan Sting. Keevan Sting! <laughs> it's like Roe Jogan all over again. I have Stephen King on this shelf too because it's just kind of where it fit best. So I'm not too picky. I don't like separate unread by read for the most part. Up here is a complete mix of like read and unread. I'm not that particular. I just, I like keeping genres together because it makes it easier to find down the road. The next question is what is the oldest book on your bookshelf? And <laughs> that's a fucking good question. I have this old Russian book literally held together by tape because it completely fell apart. It's Vesolia Semeka, uh, Nikolai Nosov, and it's this like old, I, I remember being read this when I still lived with my grandparents in the States. It was like my favorite thing ever. This book is not that old in itself, I'm pretty sure. I take it back, it's from 75. Okay. But I think it was me that ruined it because I just loved it so much. I just read the living crap out of it. That's probably the oldest book that's like mine on the shelf. I'm pretty sure. I do, however, have this copy of The Three Musketeers. My grandma got it for me at a I think she found it in an antique store in Paris, and it's from the 50s, actually. It's from this book club. Yeah, printed the 20th of December, 1956. And it looks about that old. <laughs> this bitch is, like, nasty. But it's got, like, like, little pictures inside. I mean, I imagine back in the day, printing the Three Musketeers or anything on Excel Zumo was probably a hassle. So I imagine this book would have been worth some money back in the day. 
But yeah, in terms of like actual age, this is the oldest book that I own. In terms of the longest that I've had something, it's definitely the Visole Semeca Russian book. The next question is what is the newest book on your bookshelves? Luckily, these two literally just came in the mail yesterday. I have Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis and The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. I'm writing a paper on racial capitalism and prison abolition, so I thought these would be really good resources. I was also just interested in these regardless, so it gave me a good excuse to pick them up. This one came recommended by Gabe. I will link his channel as usual. He's fantastic. He read this a little while ago and he really, really loved it. And it's really short, so I figured this would be great to pick up for that. So these are like brand spanking new. The next question is what is the longest book on your shelves? I'm not going to count textbooks for this because I don't think that's fair. I believe it is War and Peace. So if we count like the epilogue and stuff, there's about just under 1400 pages. Nobody's surprised. The longest book after double checking is War and Peace by Tolstoy. This absolute behemoth is still on my list for this year, coming in at 1400 pages. I don't know why I am possessed to do something like that, but I still plan on it. The next question is what is the shortest book on your shelves? And I'm pretty sure it's Our Prisons Obsolete. This has 120 ish pages. That's gotta be the shortest. Black Tides of Heaven is, yeah, it's over 200. Monstrous is 200. Oh, it might be something along the lines of The Prince or, aha. So I've got, oh fuck, I hate one of these. Okay, hold on. Romeo and Juliet, 118. I'm destroying my shelves. Animal Farm is under 100. Okay, that's the shortest so far. Good old Animal Farm. The Art of War. 127. Okay, so it's not the art of war. So after a little bit of digging, the shortest book on my shelves is Animal Farm by George Orwell. This edition comes in at 96 pages. This is one of my favorite books of all time. I think it is brilliant. I think it is a masterpiece. I think it should be read by anyone who dares tell me that communism is good. That's all I'm saying. The next question is what is the predominant genre on your bookshelves? And I think it's pretty freaking obvious that it's fantasy. Um, I love fantasy. We all know that. So I have this shelf that's full of fantasy. The one below it is mainly fantasy as well. I have about three other shelves on the other bookshelf that is fantasy. So shocker, right? The next question is have you done a bookshelf tour? I have not. I don't like watching them so I wouldn't really make one but like I said a million times I have done like a video of me setting up these shelves and very quickly going over how I organize them and what they all kind of look like so I will link that not the most interesting thing because I keep a lot of textbooks and notebooks and like random crap but yeah if you're interested you can go watch that so the next question is go to a random number generator and talk about the book that corresponds with that number so I said I have about 200 books. One to 200. 92. <laughs> Would you look at that? It's Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Also doing this made me realize I probably have a lot more than, than 200 books on my shelves. Granted, some of them are my boyfriend's. It's our apartment, so I put his books on my shelves. But yeah, I think I have more than 200. Shit. Oops. <laughs> this is Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I do talk about this in a wrap up, which I will link here. This is a sort of apocalyptic fantasy sci-fi 
these people live in a world that kind of likes to self-destruct with like earthquakes and volcanoes and all this crazy shit and basically you're following a couple of people that are origins which are people that can kind of connect to the earth and control the earthquakes and uh, they can kind of feel when stuff is coming and they're considered kind of like an abomination people don't trust them because of the nature of this world so it's it's really interesting there's a lot of really cool discussions and really cool stuff packed into this book but I like this book. I don't love it as much as everyone else does, but I would be willing to reread it now that I know what happens and because I do own the rest of the series and I do want to read it. And I like N.K. Jemisin. I think she does some really incredible stuff with her writing. I just didn't quite get to what everyone else got out of this, which is really disappointing because I wanted to, but I am planning on rereading this either this year or next year to be able to continue on with the series and finish it up. I own most of her work at this point, so it would be really nice to make my way through all of her stuff because she is incredible. I just didn't love it as much as everyone else did, but I still thought it was really cool, extremely unique, very well done. The next question is, do you have any fan merch or decorations on your bookshelf? No, I'm pretty boring. I don't own any like bookish merch. I'm not one to want to spend my money on that kind of stuff. I'd rather buy more books than buy like things related to books. Personally, uh, I don't have any kind of like book subscription boxes. I think Funko Pops are really stupid personally. I'm not saying if you buy them you're stupid obviously, but I just, I heard once that the, I think, maybe it was the founder or like the current owner or something, someone from Funko said that like, if there's a fan base, we'll make a Funko for it. And it just kind of like, what's the, point i don't know i just i personally have absolutely no use for them i see no value in them for myself so like i don't buy funko pops i don't collect book boxes those i also feel are a waste of my money i don't decorate my shelves because i like how they look with just books i used to have candles on my shelf but i kind of decided to pull all my books out so they're like even and that way there's not really much space left for candles and stuff. I want this place to look kind of very neat and clean and the books are kind of chaotic enough in color so I don't want to like add and pile more stuff on my shelves. This apartment is pretty small so I feel like the more clutter I put in it the worse it's gonna look. So I try to avoid cluttering my shelves um, and I just don't like how like a very full bookshelf is because if I go to pull out a book I don't want to have to like move shit to the side to get it out you know. So that's how boring I am. <laughs> And the final question is, show us your bookshelf, which again, I've done. And yeah, that was it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is kind of fun. It's kind of nice to go through the shelves and fuck around a little bit and, you know, spend some one-on-one -on -one time with my books. I hope you enjoyed. I have my social media link down below. As always, you guys can always come talk to me there. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.